Hello. So today we're going to go ahead and explore the editor, which is accessed with this little tab down here. This is where we can save files, do all the calculations that we did in the command window, and also a little programming. So to start programming, the first thing to do, I guess, for tradition's sake, would be to say hello, Octave World. There's going to be quite a few um, commands in here that you will recognize from C++. As soon as I run this, it's going to ask me to save this, and it wants me to save it in the Octave folder. If I go ahead and save it in a different location, I'm going to have to change my um, directory a little bit. So let me go ahead and save it over here. And it's going to say, do you want me to change the directory so that I can link compilers and stuff? So I'll go ahead and say change directory or add directory to load path here. All of the DOS commands like print working directory, PWD, and CD will work for this guy. but when you're first saving it, I'm going to go ahead and just say add directory to my load path, and that'll let me compile what I have on here. And then it will let me run it, and the output will show up over here. Let me clear the screen here. For this one, we'll, we'll be going back and forth between the command window and the editor quite a bit because the outputs are going to show up in the command window. So I'm going to go ahead and actually move my command window. Maybe I'll put it over here. You can rearrange all of your windows over here. So play around with dragging things to where you want them to be. Yeah, like maybe you don't use the file browser very often, so you can actually combine those two windows and just click in the heading anywhere and click and drag. So command history might be kind of nice to have and workspace, but even those two, maybe I want to combine my command history and workspace. So now I have two tabs down here and two tabs up here. But anyways, this will give me a nice arrangement for my editor on one side, command history on the other side. So let me go ahead and run this now that it is saved and everything is organized. So I say, hello world, and it shows up over here. If I want to um, pop it to a new line, remember the backslash n from C++, so that's going to work here too. So now I have my hello world printed out into the command line. So there's an output if I want an input. And maybe I want to assign my input to a variable. So I'm going to define a variable called fields. And I'm going to ask input from my user for, how are you today? And then I'll leave a little space. And then I'm going to tell it that we're going to have a um, input here that's a string so I can I can test this thing out every time you run it it will save it as well so I say how are you today and then the user has to type something in great and then you can use what you inputted here and output it again so now I can say print let's see what should we say I hear ya I feel, and then to put this variable in here, I'm going to use this percent sign, which is a placeholder. And here we go. And here is my placeholder is a string, and it's going to pull in what my variable fields is holding. So again, placeholder, I'm pulling in a string 
And the very first thing you ask, ask it to pull up is going to be the very first thing you list with commas on here. So let's go ahead and play it, see if it works. OK, so hello. How are you feeling today? So I am feeling great. I hear you. I feel great, too. So it has this text, and then it grabs the information from our variable. And then I'm also doing a new line afterwards. Here's some more examples of how to use that percentage sign placeholder for things like the printf function. So you have an integer or floating point. I'll show you how to output how many decimal places you want for that one. If you want a percentage sign and you're not wanting to use the percentage sign as a placeholder, just type two of them, and then you can get a actual percentage sign. I'll put this link in the descriptions. So what else should we print out? Let's go ahead and do the daily weather forecast. So we can have a precipitation of 0%, humidity. We'll get Houston's in there. So big humidity, wind speed, that'll be miles per hour, temperature. I'm going to put a huge temperature in here so I can show you how to control um, decimal places on floating numbers. So here we go, starting with a single quote forecast for today is, and we'll put each of these on a new line. The first one we do, we'll have precipitation in there as an integer, and I want the percent sign. So I want percent precipitation, so I'll use that double percent. Let's go ahead and try this out and hit run. It's asking how we feel again today. So here we go. Forecast today is 0% precipitation. So it pulled in our integer and it grabbed our variable up here that we had defined working well so far. Now we want to print out a few more things. So we'll go ahead and pull in percent humidity as an integer, wind in mile per hour, and then the temperature with three decimal places, floating point precision. We are adding all of these variables in the same order that those placeholders have them. Let's go ahead and run the code. How are you? And think about what's happening here. So this first chunk is from the original print statements. All the rest of this actually came from just that one line. So we're going to start with percent humidity. Our first placeholder is grabbing information from the first variable that we added in the list. And we're adding this as an integer. To get that percentage sign on here, we use two percentages, start a new line. <clears throat> Here's our wind speed. And it is the second variable in our list that it's grabbing over here. And then for the floating point number, remember we put a bunch of decimal places in temperature. And if you have a number and you want to kind of control the format of those floating numbers a little bit, very easy. 2.3, we have two numbers, dot, and then we have three decimal places. So that's, that's some very easy formatting there. And that's the print statement.